city of Boston for a great experience at Fenway Park last night. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Sox lost, but it was a great time. I have a few of these slides from my friend Bill Traveler. Uh, do I advance the slides here? Next slide. Next slide. So, most of us, I think, during the first year, would relift the flap, and at our center, we charge about $150 to cover the cost of the laser portion. At three years, it gets a little more controversial. Many of us are comfortable lifting flaps. I've lifted them up to 10 years. It can be more difficult in femtosecond flaps because they're generally better attached to the underlying stroma. And the most common complication of this is epithelial ingrowth. If we look at the literature, Robert Maloney first reported on the incidence of epithelial ingrowth, and after his primary LASIK was 0.92%, Andy Castro just had a recent uh, report on about 4,000 eyes, and his was 0%. But after retreatment, both authors reported an increased incidence of epithelial ingrowth of about 2%. Castro's cases were mostly done with a Hansatome, and a lot of Maloney's were done with the original ACS. These were just reported uh, recently. So this is the study from Castor, basically none in the primary cases and 15 or 2.3% in the retreatment cases. He also found that the epithelial ingrowth rate was much higher if you did this after three years. So during the first three years, it was only 1%, and after three years, it was about 8%. So clearly there's an increased risk the longer you wait, and that's the data on the he had a fair number of ACS cases also, and I think the configuration of the flaps with the ACS, for example, versus the femtosecond laser is different, and I think that's why we have a lower ingrowth rate. Uh, Frank Price's group reported in 2009 on 132 microkeratome relifts versus 140 femtosecond, and they found again that there were much more epithelial ingrowths in the microkeratomes than in the femtoseconds, and the, and the two that they did have did not require surgery to replace them. So the retreatment technique was studied uh, by Brian Boxer Waxer in a small study of 30 eyes where they lifted with forceps and no contact lens, lift with forceps and a contact lens, or just lift with a spatula with around the edge and no contact lens. This is the video of the technique that I use. That's using a machop uh, flap uh, elevator at the periphery of the flap or around the entire circumference of the flap first. I think this severs the epithelium in a little more clean manner. Uh, and then you just simply lift the flap with the spatula. And the incidence of uh, epithelial ingrowth with this technique, if it's done in the first year, is extremely low, as is shown in the, by my own experience and, and the studies in the literature. So what I call advanced surface ablation is basically chilling the cornea, and I use the technique that was first explained to me by Dan Dury, and I think it was suggested to him by one of his texts, and that's a frozen wet cell popsicle that we put on the eye both before taking the epithelium off and then after the epithelial ablation. We also use um, all LASIK enhancements that are being done, or surface enhancements on the LASIK flap. We do use mitomycin. And I think that the mitomycin has changed the, my personal opinion about doing retreatments on, on LASIK patients because we see a very low incidence of, of haze with this technique. Uh, the epithelial removal technique of these 90 cases had mitomycin, and yet the incidence of loss of vision from haze was essentially zero. So you can do this on the surface, and the one thing that you haven't done this in the past, when you take the epithelium off a previous LASIK flap, you'll see stria frequently that you didn't notice with the, even with the careful slit lamp examination as shown on the slide on the right. And this is more obvious in the slide on the left from Bill Trattler. Uh, he has noticed, and I think I agree with that, that femtosecond flaps when you're taking the epithelium off seem to have a smoother surface. Uh, underneath the epithelium, you don't see these little microstria that you frequently see with mechanical microkeratome flaps. So you certainly want to make sure the flap is sealed. Uh, I think the risk of it, uh, haze is low if you use prophylaxis, and it's probably better to slide the epithelium away from the hinge uh, so that you've got the security of the hinge holding the flap back as you take off the epithelium. 
One important thing, of course, when you're doing a reoperation is to make absolutely sure you're not showing early signs of ectasia. Make sure you have topography before you go ahead and, and consider any of these enhancement techniques. Now, this is a slide from Neil. Uh, make sure you've got uh, enough residual bed, especially if it's a case where you didn't know what the original surgery was. And in most cases, these results are excellent. Our incidence of reoperations at our center is about 10%. And when you look at that closely, about 3 or 4% of those are primary during the first year. And the other 6% are cases that have been done in previous years. So we're all doing a fair number of enhancements. And I think both techniques are quite useful. Thank you very much.